1947, in the deserts of New Mexico, an Air Force colonel named John Staff began a bizarre, top-secret aeromedical project that would lead to the development of the first crash test dummies. Colonel John Paul Stapp is sort of the father of this business in the sense that he was interested in how to protect air crewmen uh, when they ejected uh, out of an aircraft at high speed. And he didn't know any way to study that other than to subject human volunteers to loading that's very similar. One of the rules of human volunteer testing is you've got to be willing to do it yourself. So uh, he was his own volunteer. Step used this high-speed test track for a terrifying series of experiments. He started the countdown. Five, eight, four. Then uh, just as he reaches zero, you get this enormous ram against your back and uh, feel totally helpless. You're being given the biggest kick that could be delivered. Remember, there was the old saying in the Army, don't volunteer. <laughs> and in fact, there were several figures in the early days of this kind of work before there were dummies who were doing peculiar things. Several of these people uh, became disabled. Undeterred by the risks, Colonel Stapp pushed human testing to the limit. He was trying to work out the maximum speed at which pilots could safely eject. During a seven-year period, he volunteered for 26 potentially lethal experiments. So Dr. Stapp kept going faster and faster, and finally in December 1954, he hit his uh, fastest speed. According to the newspaper, 632 miles an hour. According to the calculations I made from feet per second, at one point he hit 639. But uh, the average can be about 632. And he stopped very, very short. Just a matter of a second or less. Stapp's record-breaking run made him the fastest man on Earth. He endured a massive 43 Gs during the deceleration, the equivalent of smashing into a wall at 70 miles per hour. As he said, his eyeballs just about popped out. His eyes started bleeding, and for approximately 10 minutes following his famous run, he could not see, but later in the hospital his vision started returning. He also sustained blisters all over his body, dust particles impinged upon his skin right through the flight suit he was wearing and raised rather interesting looking welts, which fortunately went away. subjected himself to an incredible 83 G's in a later test made on the shorter Daisy track. Beading went into a state of shock and for a time was considered to be in a critical condition. Five days later, however, he was back at work with no permanent disability. These and other intrepid human volunteers took risks at least as dangerous as those they had required of the animal subjects. And the data thus gained contributed significantly to the successful flights of Alan Shepard, John Glenn, and their successors.